So, good afternoon again. Hope everyone uh, enjoyed his lunch and is ready for uh, the next chapter of today. So, we have still a lot of exciting talks to listen to, a lot of uh, exciting presentations. And first of all, one is Improve Cyprus with Gherkin. Gherkin is correct? Like this? Gherkin. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Given by Martin Schrube. Martin is one of our senior front end developers at Bolt. He's passionate about the underworld, the undersea world, the sea of Earth. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, and about the ins and outs of Angular, but you can ask him also everything about other front-end frameworks. So Martin, take us with you to the Cypress Forest and uh, show us the secrets of working. So, Thank you. So, yeah, like my presentation already uh, maybe seem like uh, we are going to talk about Cypress, uh, Gherkin in specifically, but first a little bit about me. I'm Maarten, uh, front-end developer at Ordina, like already said. Uh, I'm working here for three years, a little more than three years. At the moment I'm working at Equans, but I am on loan to NG France, with, where this uh, ID is uh, conceived. Um, but as Mike already said, I'm also a scuba instructor. I'm much more uh, fluent in the underwater world. So if you want to talk about that, we can do that. I can even teach you how to dive, so talk about that later on. <laughs> um, so one of my favorite quotes, uh, and when testing is hard and frustrating, it's by myself. <laughs> I really didn't like end -end testing uh, when I first started front-end development. Uh, it was hard to maintain. It was in AngularJS. It was with Protractor. Uh, it's, I think some people still use it, but it's decontinued now. Uh, Angular gives you the option to choose other stuff. But the most people will choose Cypress at the moment. Um, but a little more about the project that I was working on. Uh, Aquans, uh, Smart O&M. It's actually NG Smart O&M, but since I'm working for Aquans, Let's talk about that. The idea was um, most of the people here will know NG as an uh, energy company, but actually they maintain a lot of buildings for different customers, stuff like that. Uh, what they wanted to do was have a platform to combine everything, uh, the tickets for that, uh, reporting, stuff like that. Uh, there were a lot of IoT devices that were connecting to it to be able to monitor rooms, elevator stuff like that. Uh, that's defined in sites, asset level, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of information that's not needed. Um, there's also an entire ticketing platform combined to it so that they can send their engineers to the rooms to, uh, to go and fix stuff like that. Um, there were a lot of overlapping domains with a lot of people developing on it, so end -to end testing was something that was really needed, but some people uh, really hated it, like myself. Um, and even in Cyprus, it's not that easy to maintain, write all your tests, uh, set up the data to have clean end to end tests, stuff like that. Um, we, had, we didn't have a lot of tests to begin with, when we are using, we weren't using Gherkin scenarios. We had like maybe 100, we'll see that later. But it was big tests, like 1,500 lines of code just for one test, just to set up data, stuff like that. Uh, so about two years ago, or a year and a half ago, we decided that we wanted something else. And some people got very excited about Cucumber and Gherkin. Um, by default, what we say, should say first is Cucumber. That's a tool that supports behavior driven development. Um, like it says there, it takes expectable, expectable specifications written in plain text so everyone can read them, everyone can write them, and it's by definition, uh, it can be seen as an acceptance criteria for your feature that you will develop. So. Um, 
yeah, like, like that it validates the software as does as the specs say. Uh, that's what the tests should do. Uh, that's the default of a test. Um, but they are following some basic syntax, the cucumber tests, and that's the syntax that we are we'll talk about, and that's Gherkin uh, in itself. An example, yeah, just a slight note. I am a fan of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, so you will see some references to it in here. So this is just an example feature file that will be written by a QA developer or yourself or whatever you want. It starts with a feature that says what you want to test. You can have some background and then the scenario that you were willing to test. So given a supercomputer called Deep Thought, when I demand to learn the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, and I am patient for seven and a half million years, then the supercomputer deep thoughts answer with 32. Everybody will know what is expected of my feature. Uh, you can define it by default steps. So every uh, feature file will have, can have a background, uh, will have a when, then, uh, when, then, uh, stuff like that. Um, it can really grow. We have feature files uh, in our current project, about 25, 30 lines. You can have a lot of background. You can have a lot of uh, givens, stuff like that. So every uh, test is written up in this scenario. What it will do, how we will be able to do it in uh, any JavaScript or whatever framework. I'm trying to do it framework agnostic, but most of my knowledge is based on Angular framework, so you will see maybe some references to it. But mo most of the time we will see that everything we will use is TypeScript and that you will also have Webpack. Uh, it is possible to use ESM and other bundlers. I don't have experience with those as, as much as I do with Webpack, so that's why I'm going to show how we will do it in Webpack. You could al also just use plain old JavaScript, but who does that anymore? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea, but you will have to hate yourself if you do that still. Um, yeah, just what we do need is the preprocessor for Webpack for Cypress and again for the Cypress Cucumber tests. That's just basic. Um, we have to configure Cypress as well, but it's quite an easy configuration. You just have to tell them. My spec pattern is now a feature uh, expansion, uh, extension. You can also call it whatever you want, but you will mostly get your uh, test files in feature files, so that's just that. Uh, that. This isn't really that clear. But you will have to tell your uh, Webpack that every feature file will have to go to the preprocessor of the Cypress preprocessor, uh, Cypress Cucumber preprocessor. Um, also, again, you will have to say that the TypeScript will have to go to the TypeScript loader. Uh, and one more line that will be added here is that you will have to tell your Cypress that I, I want to add this plugin to my Cypress. Uh, I will share the, screen, the slides later on so you can copy and paste it if you want. So now, how do, do a test like that will with a look in TypeScript or how will you be able to use it. So again here, I just have a feature join with the scenario when navigated to the home page. When I visit the join website and I should see a navigation mark. Just a basic test, not, nothing that hard. But when I look at the TypeScript for it, you will see uh, some structure that you may know from your describe it uh, way of working. But then we will just work with a when, then, and you can also have a given, and you have different, all, all the kinds of steps that you can write in a scenario here, you can give a function for over here. So for the rest, it's just plain Cypress commands that you can use in there, or uh, your Mocha-like uh, testing environment. So that's just the basic. What it will look like in your Cypress, it will, either, it will look like a normal Cypress test, but then with your given when then scenarios, and it will still do your assertion as you know it by your Cypress as it is at the moment if you use Cypress, which you should. 
or something, or some testing framework. What we can do, basically, uh, when we get a test file from our QA tester, not all the steps will be implemented. So we will add them to a step file, which, which will just return pending. If you return pending, then your step will be skipped. So at least you will know this will have to be tested. There is a, a, a logging for it. And then at least the QA can see when this step is implemented. Uh, it's in the code, but it's not yet implemented. So I will have to go arrest my developer to be able to, to finish this. Um, that's just the basic first step that, that can be done. And that's not that hard to, to implement already. And then at least you know that you need to implement it later on. If you want, you can also pass variables in your scenarios to your uh, testing. You can have integers that can be passed to your uh, callback uh, your function. You can even have strings. Uh, if you want to go even further, you can define your own type of variables that you be able to check some other stuff. For example, in our uh, project, we use tickets. Tickets have a specific meta type. And then we can pass when I want a ticket of that meta type. Then we can already check if that meta type exists in the code or not. You can define extra uh, expressions and variables the way you want to. This is one of the main keys to be able to reuse tests or to see it later on. That way, you will have less time writing tests and more time just writing your code and being able to, to reuse the steps that you're already defined on a larger scale. Something else that we can pass is data tables. Big way to pass uh, large chunks of data that you want to check. You can even check your, your UI tables or whatever. Here I just pass uh, a list of the characters, and then I know, want to know what species they are. If you, uh, it's not that clear here, but I will explain it later on. You will get a data table type in your function. Um, it will, if you go and get the hashes of it, it will be an array of objects with the key and the value of that row. So every time I have three uh, entries in my array over here, and the first one is then with the key the name is art dent species human. So even there, you can go check multiple stuff at the same time. If you want, you even have a specific data table. It's not really a data table. It's examples that you can pass in the Gherkin syntax. Then you can work with a scenario outline. And then your preprocessor will completely look at it and will make three tests out of this now. It will just rerun them. You run the scenario three times, but it will replace the placeholders with the example value. Even then here, you can use with the variables. You can get them further on uh, out of your testing uh, set. So that's really handy if you want to, if you have a lot of different data that will have to relate to each other. Um, Otherwise, if you were writing this in, in the default describe it content, you will have to do something yourself. Do you also use this for filling in a form then? Or uh, do you use line by line? Uh, if you want to fill in a form, I would suggest using data tables. Then you can fill in, you can, you can say uh, on the on form with the ID, the input with ID this, I want to input this, stuff like this. In examples, it's really just to check different scenarios in the same uh, that, that are really alike, but you don't want to rewrite everything. Then another thing that you can do with this is tagging. Uh, every, every, almost everything you can tag. Uh, you can tag your scenario. You can tag your feature. You can even tag your examples. The cool part about this is that if you want you can run your Cypress tests with partial end-to-end -end tests. So you can just say, I want to run my tests with example and smoke. 
this, uh, so this one is stacked with examples and then only this example table will be called. The other ones will be skipped. Uh, so all the tests that are not valid in this tag will be skipped. It will just, it will still show up in your end-to-end -end log so you know that it's skipped. If you don't want this, you can configure it in your Cypress uh, environment, uh, in your Pupas environment config file that you want to omit them, but then you don't have the logging that you really skipped those tests. So I would suggest not to do that. Um, but it's really handy how, how we use it. We use it like this. We have a, an example table with a smoke uh, tag on it and then one with a functional. The smoke one will run at every unit, uh, at every pull request, and then the functional one will run at every nightly run. So for our pull requests, then we have a lot of small example tables that we still know that our build will, will run, but then for the QAers, they want to know that everything runs, and that's only done at night, so that we don't bog down the pull request flow. Then you have some more um, things you can do, hooks. Before and after hooks. Um, there are one before or after each test that complies to the tags you give to, uh, to, the, to the parameters within it. If you don't give anything, it will run before or after every of your tests. We use this to set up our test data in advance. So we will create new contracts, we will create new assets, we will create clean, an entire clean new contract with, that we can test on every time for every test. And that way we know that every test will have the best data available for them to test it. But as you can see, you can also do some stuff specifically for uh, an attack. Even here, you can combine tags. Let's say I want to do, I want to print a new book every time I'm reading the Hitchhiker's Guide or I want to do something when I'm reading or viewing it. Um, so clean up code, clean up your contract after, create one before, stuff like that. Now, the main goal why we switched to Gherkin scenarios is reusing those steps. By default, uh, steps are looked at, uh, the, the TypeScript will be looked at at the same level as your feature file is defined. If you want to build some global steps, like for example, filling forms or clicking a button and stuff like that, you will have to define them on a different path, but you can configure it where to look where the preprocessor will look for these steps. By default is this Cypress integration file path, the file path I will explain later. At these paths, it will look for your step definitions. Um, that's very limitative, limitative because if you want to reuse steps, then you will have to go and import TypeScript in TypeScript in TypeScript, and then you don't really know anymore what you really want to get out of it. So you can go on a global path and really go and define them there and then link them in the step definitions. As you could already see, there is a file path. What that does is matches the file name of the feature file, and then it will go look for TypeScript files in there. So if you have a feature file that's on this path and the step definition is source Cypress end-to-end -end file path, .ts, it will only match a TypeScript file that's exactly like this. Um, that's a bit restrictive as well. Then they also have uh, a file path, uh, path parameter and that matches part of the pad of the feature file. So if you have something like source and to end hitchhikers nasal feature, and we have a step definition configuration of the file part with slash steps, then it will match files in all these folders. So how we can do that then is put some extra files in there and it will also match. But what we do at ng is just one global folder with all our global steps in there. So it will look in there. Then you can still just use the default configuration with one extra parameter in, it, in there. So look to look at extra TypeScript files. You can also go 
in your TypeScript file and reuse steps. So let's say I have a, a step when I read a variable, then I can go in another step and call it as this with step, pass this parameter and then pass the variable in there. That way you can go and combine steps to make sure that you don't have to always go and put all these steps in your feature file separately. Uh, it's just some cleaner code, uh, but that's some, some useful as well. Yeah. Some tips that I would like to give is make some generic steps for UI interactions like uh, button click, stuff like that. Um, form interactions like we already discussed. Um, combine steps with this step definition. Uh, we do it a lot. Uh, just to make sure that you don't copy yourself. Uh, just even in the feature file, you don't want to copy yourself because it will look very ridiculous if you have a, a given statement that combines, uh, that is that's, that's, repeated on multiple occasions just with a different parameter. So that's that. Put your shared steps in an easy to find folder. Uh, don't go and import steps in each other because then you will get in import hell and it will be difficult to go and look for everything what you want over there because everything is in string based it's harder to go and look for your steps well, actually just basic clean code principles that you will have to align yourself with from there on on it's smooth sailing uh, normally uh, if you get your QA on board it will just deliver your feature files. That's what he does on our team. It will deliver his uh, requirements in a feature file. And most of the time, he has a list of steps that he can reuse, like button clicks, stuff like that. Uh, so for most of our tests, we only have to write one or two extra steps, and that's it. So it gives us a lot less time developing our end-to-end -end tests, but a lot of more time developing and debugging our own codes, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, it almost takes no time for us. Uh, only a few steps need to be implemented. Our end-to-end -end tests run on, on, on every build on a pull request. They didn't do that before. We have to manually start them or wait for the nightly run to see that something has failed. Uh, we still run them with all tags. More are feature are tested. I, I don't know if there is a project here that really tests everything with end-to-end. -end. We do try to do it now, but still, there's a lot of features that are not end-to-end -end tested, but more are tested at the moment. So what we had, we had about 100 end-to-end -end tests, hard to keep requirements tested. Writing end-to-end -end tests took very long. And we had to convert the requirements to our tests ourselves and to keep it updated, once a uh, feature changes, you change some stuff, you will have to go into end -test testing, do, the, do this all again, check it out, why is it failing? Now we have about 820 end to end tests uh, that we have. In a year and a half, it's growing quite a lot. And it takes a lot less time. Uh, at the moment, we spend yeah, like 10% of our story on end to end testing instead of 20, 25. Uh, so our business really likes that, that we can deliver more in the same amount of time. Our QA also likes it because he has some more uh, control over how we test and he also, uh, he was, is a big fan of the Gherkin scenarios. He's already implementing it in other projects. Uh, it's really growing in NG as well because they really see the benefit of it uh, just to be able to reuse stuff. <coughs> I'm already done. I have no idea how fast I went. OK. Uh, slides are here. Uh, just Google Slides. If you have any more questions, now is the time. So in the feature file, there is a sentence written, when, then. Yeah. But that same sentence is also written in the when statement function in the TypeScript file. If you make a mistake, in writing the wrong one, does it, does it have any issue? If you write, if you mismatch the, the sentence, it will not find the step and, it will go, and your Cypress will fail. It will just say, I don't find step definition and then it will fail. Is there a, because that's 
error prone? Is there a, is there a way to make it less error prone? Because that's strict. Uh, in IntelliJ, there's a plugin that will ah. tell you if you have the a matching step in VS Code as well. Uh, but you have plugins to, to tell them uh, you're using a step that I have no idea what you're tunneling about. And you can even in IntelliJ right click, create a step, and then it will create it itself. Autocomplete, like? Yeah, it also, uh, in, I, I can only speak for IntelliJ since I use that, but. Yeah, I know a lot of people who use CS codes. <laughs> Other questions? Have you tried it with, uh, uh, for the cases of, of unit testing with Cypress as well? Does it work for, for unit testing with Cypress? The Cucumber tests work with unit testing, but not with this implementation. You will have to really get cucumber.js in there, and then you can try and write unit tests for it. But it's, it's, it's less used. I don't know why, really, but. Uh, the reason, it, I think it's really because this describes the scenario that you want to go to. A unit test is mostly just your component parts. Uh, and I would say this is more convenient for end-to-end -end testing than unit tests. Uh, you have over 800 uh, tests now. Yeah. What's the, uh, the, the time that it takes on the pipeline? If you if we run the entire test, it takes an hour and 20 minutes, something like that. If we run our tests that are run with uh, pull requests, it takes about 20 minutes. And do, do you have to, do you have a cache mechanism to, to, to avoid running them all the time, or? We don't have that at the moment. They are looking into it, but at the mo they had, they tried it once, but they had some issues that test data were interfering with each other. So now they just set everything always new. An easy solution for that would be an exam. Yeah. yeah that really works well. Okay. Other questions? And thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>